where you scream to watch that watch this and I'll dive down through this hair reflection a bizarre adventure in fear an experience in shock more shattering than your strangest nightmare <coughs> night of the living dead Hi, and welcome to Watch This. I'm CJ Johnson. Thanks for joining me. George A. Ramiro has passed away at the age of 77. Whether or not you like zombies, there can be no denying that he is a massive influence on modern cinema. Someone who would agree with that wholeheartedly is Jim Flanagan, and he joins me back on Watch This. Hi, Jim. CJ, how you doing? So George A. Romero was really important to you. He was. He was one of my introductions to, to cinema. I stumbled across um, a very late night screening of Night of the Living Dead when I was too young, when I was about 10. Mm. And I- That is too young for that much, film. It's, it's much too young. And, it, and interesting that we, we've discussed this um, after talking about the, the new Ridley Scott Alien film uh, the other month. It was the other singular, most terrifying cinematic experience of my life. In fact, I didn't finish it um, and I then snuck Another late night watch when it was um, when it was screened a little bit later. So I that that was one of that was a singular cinematic experience for me, and I was an absolute Romero obsessive um, the, onwards. The thing about the Night of the Living Dead, one of the many great things about it is yep. that, unlike Alien, for example, or The Shining, or The Omen, or The Amityville Horror, or yep. Poltergeist, or any of those horror films. They're all very scary films, but they're all slick. Whereas yeah. Night of the Living Dead, if you stumble across it and you find it, it feels like this weird found object because it's so handmade, it's so rough, the handheld camera, the lighting, it feels dirty. Well, it was you a know, it feels adult in a in a in I, an almost porno way. Well, that's a, that's a sort of perfect way of describing Night of the Living Dead, I think. And and it, I I found the the write-ups of Romero this week. Um, interesting and, and a, a, a lot of them to me have, have missed the point because I think that a particular, you know, with, 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 the, with the trilogy that he made initially, but, but first and foremost with Night of the Living Dead, Romero invented the modern horror film yeah. to me. And I, I think he, I really think 68, he- 68, right? 68. Yeah. And he, I think in, in two main ways, he invented what we now perceive as, as the sort of modern horror genre. I think first and foremost, he, he, introduced exactly what you just, just, just described, this sort of bone-shattering, flesh-gnawing uh, realism and naturalism that had never before been seen in, in horror cinema. And I yeah. think until then, horror was largely this sort of abstract, gothic um, genre on the sidelines um, of, of cinema, or, um, or this sort of, sort of fake mask, silly-suited, um, again, fairly non-serious genre in in, uh, in in contemporary cinema and he he completely um, uh, ignored all of those existing tropes and and introduced this horrific naturalism um, and I think at the same time he also launched the horror film as a way of dealing with with sort of serious social and political and cultural issues and that had never been done either I don't think there is a film like get out without Romero's Night of the Living Dead in 1968. So I, I really think, and I've, I've, I've found it interesting that the extent to which I haven't heard that much in the commentary accompanying his, his death this month. It's been more along the lines of he was this huge innovator in the genre. And I think that, that to an extent misses the point of, of Romero in just how revolutionary a filmmaker he was. Absolutely. And you can still see Night of the Living Dead and it terrify the pants off you. And very few horror films sort of pre-2000 exist in that way. I mean, I still think Texas Chainsaw Massacre does, yep. but Night of the Living Di Dead really does. And it is, it, it breaks so many rules. The way mm. it just starts so relentlessly. Oh, it just drops you <laughs> You're in. Right in the middle yeah. of it. Well, and again, there's no one, there's, there's no John Carpenter and there's no assault on Precinct yeah. 13 and that whole, that whole approach of just dropping you in the middle of, of the action yeah. without, um, without uh, Romero, I think. and. That you know, we're very familiar now with the sort of one-man horror-making, you know, self-contained Sam Raimi, 
esque film unit of someone just going off and making a film like that. Again, he was the first to do that. Yeah. He made Neither Living Dead for almost no money. It's totally independent. It's completely yep. independent. It's handmade, as I say. He shot it, Small he edited crew, it himself. Unknown actors. Yep. They weren't even actors, most of them. Yep. Yep. And yeah, it just it just feels like really like something you could actually go out and do in the in this kind of the backyard, you know, yeah, of your he, imagination, which is what he did. And he basically did. He made it yeah. in the back streets of Pennsylvania, which is yeah. where he made um, the majority of his zombie trilogies, as, as he calls them. Although the word zombie is never used in Night of the Living Dead. It's no. only ever referred to as ghouls yeah, yeah. Um, in the film. The terminology came later. So Sam Raimi went off and did the same sort of thing with the Evil Dead movies. And yeah. Peter Jackson, of course, did yeah, the yeah. same thing later in New Zealand with yeah. Bad Taste and yeah. all those, those ultra gory yeah. sort of handmade things that he made in his mother's kitchen yep. cabinet, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Night of the Living Dead, he cast, and he says he didn't do it for any political reason. He said he just found the best actor for the job, but yep. he cast a black man. Yep, Dwayne Jones. A, as yep. the main, as sort of the main uh, good person, i.e. the people inside the house fighting back against the yep. zombies. Yep. And that was actually kind of revolutionary. It was huge, again, in 1968, and, mm. and um, it attracted a lot of criticism um, at the time. It was interesting, I was reading up some of the, the media um, reports and early reviews during the week. Uh, really, really very subtly racist criticisms of the oh. film that he, you know, wasn't um, casting the most qualified actors in the, in the main roles. And so really, <laughs> really provocative yeah. um, um, things yeah. that, that he did as a filmmaker, clearly unconsciously when, when, he, when he made that film. Well, yeah, because yeah. of course, if... If he did, say, cast just regardless of the gentleman's race, what yep. was his name? Dwayne Jones. Dwayne Jones. The lead. But just because yep. he was the best person that auditioned. Yep. What he obviously then found over the course of it was an ending because mm. yeah. his yep. ending, which is still shattering yes. on a social and political level, yep. acknowledges the fact that his lead character is black yep. Yep. because Correct. his ending is this exposure of sort of yep. southern racism. Yep. Yep. Which is, and which is also indicative of, of, again, that new type of filmmaking that he brought and there are all sorts of suggestions and, and interviews that occurred afterwards about the way that the film changed whilst they were shooting and making it. So clearly, again, this is this is early independent horror guerrilla filmmaking. Mm. Clearly, his cast and crew ultimately informed the type of filmmaking that they that they ended up with, yeah. which which again we're very familiar with now. Not so much so in in 1968. Yeah. But don't you think one of the things that I think we should be talking about with with Romero's passing is again the influence that he had in launching horror cinema as a serious piece of social criticism and and look to my, to my mind i think that has dissipated a lot and you know clearly it's it's to do with the changing nature of big studio filmmaking in in, in america um but i find it really really interesting when you look at the prolific you, you look at his broad influence i mean um um the Walking Dead is by far the world's most watched television show, yeah. which is in effect a television version of someone that was influenced uh, yeah. in the graphic novels by Romero. Yeah. Um, you know, the prevalence of zombie as a, as a pop cultural concept is huge. Yeah. And yet I think a lot of the way that it has evolved and a lot of the way that, that horror and popular culture cinema has evolved really... Um, strips back and and kind of shies away from the kind of uncompromising social criticism that Romero did. And you look at you look at the Zack Snyder remake of of um, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. Which is a yeah. which is a really which is a really fun, hard boiled piece of horror filmmaking, but has absolutely nothing to say. Yeah, Dawn of the Dead, Romero's Dawn of the Dead, the second one in the first three of the Dead films. He then yep. made more, but there's there's kind of this established trilogy Night of the Living Dead, yep. Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, yep. and then there's a gap, and then he makes more because he kind of needs to do something. Then he made Land of the Dead, the fourth yeah. one, yeah. But Dawn yep. of the Dead is spectacular. It's the one that's set in the shopping mall, and it's kind of funny a yep. little bit yep. in this social, economic way because <clears> the <throat> zombies become like consumers. Yes. Yeah, and you're right, and it's bumbling full, around the mall. It's full. It's full of beautifully metaphoric shots of zombies, sort of pressed against the glass, yeah, yeah, gazing yeah. into the 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 consumer goodies inside the the myriad shops inside the mall. I mean, it's full of really eloquent, clear, yeah. metaphoric imagery. I think in yeah. a way that that Zack Snyder's one isn't yeah. necessarily, and again, in the way that. Um, 
um, The Walking Dead clearly isn't at all. And in fact, he had very disparaging things to say about The Walking Dead. I think he referred to it as a, as a soap opera that occasionally had, had zombies in it. Yeah, I mean, he, he was 77. Um, yeah. So by that Decent point, run. he was allowed to, you know, have strong opinions yep. and be a bit of a be a bit of a grumpy auteur. Yep. And so he I'm didn't like The Walking Dead, and he didn't like zombies. Pardon me, he didn't like zombies running, which no, is a shame he didn't. because I love Twenty Eight Days Later. So do and I. You're Twenty Eight Weeks Later, yep. and in those movies, the zombies run, and to me, that makes the zombies refreshingly terrifying. Yes, although I think I think Danny Boyle's two zombie films, 28 Days and 28 Weeks Later, is a good example, and I'm really fond of those films, especially the first I one. I love them. But I think, <clears throat> I think they're a good example of the way that the terrain that Romero created as, as this provocative um, collection of ideas um, that is construed through the zombies kind of disappeared in the second and third generations that were using yeah. the material. And no disrespect to Danny Boyle, it's a really, it's a really excellent film. Again, I'm not so sure it has much to say other than, you know, some, some kind of light touch, beware the military in the final reel, which is nothing that Romero arguably didn't say yeah. more convincingly in Day of the in Dead. In Day of the Dead, mm. yeah. It's interesting, he was such an independent iconoclast and remained yeah. so throughout his career. And that's why sometimes he'd get $10 million, sometimes he'd get half a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was always making films, but his yeah. budgets varied widely because he never stayed in fashion because he obviously didn't play the studio game. No. And he obviously wouldn't amend his vision for anyone. <laughs> no. So he worked independently his entire career. With the exception of Monkey Shines, which was the one studio okay. film that he made and he had a terrible experience with that. But and you I think I, it's good. I quite like Monkey Shines. Look, it's 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 too long. It's about 130 minutes. <laughs> it's long. It is, it is, it's too long. And but yeah. within, and part of the problem with Monkey Shines is that there was a lot of studio interference and he was very publicly hostile and frustrated of the, of the, of the way that they interfered. And they re-edited the film without his, his knowledge oh, afterwards right. before it was released. Buried in its two hour plus running time is a really fantastic 90 minute um, horror thriller. Oh. Um, if you can kind of go through its lapses, I still really enjoy Monkey Shines. It's, it's for, for people who haven't seen it, it's a, you, you know, um, pet monkey goes nuts. Um, yep. type scenario, has a lot of really great M Romero stuff in it if you, if you stick with it. Now, I will recommend a different one. I'm yep. going to recommend The Crazy. Oh, I like The Crazy. Have you seen too. The Crazy? Yeah, yeah. The I've... Crazy is, The Crazy is crazy. It is. Because part of the thing is, for a movie from that era, yep. early 70s. Yeah, 73, I think, The Crazy is, yeah. It is so relentless in its yeah. editing. It mm. is just bam, 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 yeah. bam, 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 bam. No scene yeah. is more than, you know, 30 seconds really. Yeah. And no single shot is ever more than a yeah. second or two. Like it is fast. David Stratton. And most films weren't fast then. David Stratton would have hated the the editing in uh, in the in the crazies. Yeah. You're right. It's edited in a very modern way. There are a lot yeah. of shots in that. Now, do you think a lot of people dismiss the crazies as a, as a sort of second par reworking of, of um Night of the Living Dead. I, I largely disagree with that. I think no, the crazy its own thing. It is, and it's a nice, it's a nice sort of hybrid of his new zombie genre with a sort of disease outbreak yeah. genre as well. Yeah, and it's well. so anti-government, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I just love. You know, it's so. And again, again, there's a there's a really anodyne remake from about ten oh, years is ago that? that isn't that right. isn't worth um, bothering with as well. I'm reading I'm reading the six volume graphic novel version of Stephen King's The Stand. Yep. And I've never read The Stand, and I have. I haven't watched the miniseries, so this is my first time with The Stand. Right. And The Crazies obviously has great yeah. parallels with The Stand yes. because they're both about a an, an outbreak of an infectious yep. plague yep. that is actually the the loss yep. of a weapon, a biological weapon developed by the US military. And it just terrifies me. The idea that actually they might have one and that maybe Russia and yeah. everyone else has one as well. Rem and that if it got out there where it all be screwed is terrifying. Romero clearly wasn't very fond of the government or the military. <laughs> no, wasn't yeah. wasn't a Especially fan. not of the military. No. Yeah. But it's interesting that you that you mentioned Stephen King because they they work together they twice. Did. And Creep they, Show. Yes, Creep Show, which is Creep Show's a great movie. Which I think is and is a good example of just how broad Romero yeah. was. You know, Creepshow which is, is this beautiful um, homage to classic 50s sort of comedy Comics. horror. And it's yeah. great. And, and it, um, you know, it, um, and it's And it's funny creeps. and it's, it's light. Yeah, but it's I, also creepy. Yeah, I really enjoy Creepshow. And also the, the Dark Half, which was his kind of pure 
um, collaboration with Stephen King based on his novel from 91, 92, I think it was so released, is which is... That? What, what is it? Or, yeah, or what is, is that about? Oh, it's, it's, look, it's, it's, it's based on the novel. It's basically ab about, it's kind of a dated concept now, but it's basically about a writer, a very kind of early 90s Stephen yeah. King terrain. It's a writer who has this protagonist that he's written about in, you know, 10 plus a dozen novels who comes to life, oh, okay. basically. Yeah. And it's, look, it's, it's, it's quite good. Okay. It, it, it's full of, it's full of Stephen King-esque kind of literary flourishes and some kind of Romero hyperviolence. It doesn't quite work. It's a, it's a curiosity that's worth um, thinking about. But Stephen King was very, very supportive always of Romero. Yeah. And I think referred to him as his all-time favourite collaborator. And I think they remained close throughout um, oh, I'm his sure. life. Two lovely ways that the universe, or this planet at least, is memorialising George A. Romero, mm. the Monroeville Mall, which is the mall at which uh, Dawn of the Dead was shot. Wow, right. They've made an area downstairs awesome. freely available to anyone who wants to dress up as a zombie and come walk around <laughs> that area of the mall and, and be a zombie in the mall. You, you just have license to go and stagger yep. around there yep. for an yep. hour. It's, it's, it's near the sports store, near the TJ Maxx sports store or something. <laughs> there are directions to it on the mall's website. <laughs> and even better... And this is going to be great. By the, by, the time, by the time our audience is watching this, this yeah. may have already happened, yeah. in which case I'm sure there's vision of it on, you know, all over the web, because George A. Romero's family yeah. has made his funeral service in Toronto an open to all comers event. Oh, wow. So basically they're Can saying, come dress as zombies at oh, his funeral. How perfect. So how good is that so going to be? be? It's going to be an international zombie fest. gay zombie rave, <laughs> yep. basically. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. I love that. So Vale, <laughs> George A. Romero, we're recommending obviously Night of the Living Dead, uh, Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. Jim also recommends... Give that. Monkey Shines a crack. Stay, stay with it. And I recommend The Crazies. Uh, thanks for watching. Watch this. Go watch some Romero.